everyone, and welcome to the Something in Mimosas podcast, a show where we share powerful life lessons, a few laughs, and empower women while sipping on mimosas. Now, grab some orange juice and champagne and welcome your host, Gail Duck. Well, what's up, everyone? This is Gail Dudley, your host of Something and Mimosas. How are you today? I hope you are enjoying the week, and I don't want to delay, so let's get started. Once again, we're going to start with that mimosa recipe. By now, you know when you join this podcast, you should have your mimosa in hand, along with pencil and paper or your smartphone or computer laptop or tablet to take down notes for the upcoming mimosa recipe. Today, I want to call it Give the People What They Want Mimosa. Yep, that's the name of the mimosa. I've made that up. It's called Give the People What They Want Mimosa. So just write it down, y'all. Give the people what they want mimosa. You're going to have some strawberries. You're going to have some blueberries. You're going to have some raspberries. You're going to have some lemon slices. You're going to have some orange slices. And you're also going to have some mandarin oranges. Yep, you're going to just have a fruit. If you want to put some pineapples in it, then put some pineapples in it. Whatever you want to do. If you want to put some mangoes or some peaches, you want to do that too. You're going to do this in a punch bowl. And so, of course, you're going to have a frozen can of orange juice from the frozen section you're going to go ahead and put that in your punch bowl. Then you're going to take either some sparkling cider or some champagne, and you're going to put that in the punch bowl. The entire bottle, go ahead and dump it all in there. Dump it all in there. Don't stir anything, but you'll notice that the frozen orange juice that's in the can is going to begin to dissolve. There's going to be some bubbly going on, but it's all okay. Then hopefully you have an Aldi's in town. You're going to go and get you a bottle of the peach Bellini. You're going to get you a bottle of the peach Bellini and you're going to pour that in there too. Now, if you get the bottle of the peach Bellini, that is alcohol. That's a wine. So if you want to get you some non-alcoholic, if you're doing this, what we call virgin way, you're going to get you some peach juice. You're going to pour that in there. You're going to take all that fruit that I just told you about, and you're going to put that in there as well. Now you begin to stir. Just begin to stir it. Not a lot. Just begin to stir it. Let it sit. Now, because you use the frozen can of orange juice, and hopefully you chilled either your champagne or your sparkling cider or your of course, your Bellini, your peach wine, or if you do peach juice, all of that should be chilled beforehand. So because it's all chilled and you have your frozen can of orange juice, you're just going to let it sit out for about 15, 20 minutes. Just let it sit out. Do not add ice cubes to it. Again, do not add ice cubes to it. Do not do that. All right. Now that it has chilled, It's going to get you a glass, pour it in, and then take some of the fruit and put it in the center of your champagne flute. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. That's called Give the People What They Want Mimosa. Give the People What They Want Mimosa. So there you have it. There you have it. But that's for a later time. Hopefully you have your Bellini ready so we can get started for today's podcast. And again, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you about the mimosas that you're drinking. Let me know if you love them or hate them. If you have a certain recipe, send me your recipe so that I can announce it on the air. All right. The last podcast, we talked about getting to the root of it. And we talked about the six areas. And the first one being that, you know, we should admit something is wrong. We start admitting that it's something is wrong. And then I gave you the other five to follow that and talked about the importance of us getting to the root of whatever is going on. We just got to get to the root of it. Today, I want to talk about write the vision, then execute it. Y'all, we have to write down this vision that we are seeing. And then after it has been written, 
it is time for us to execute that vision. It is so important to execute the vision. Again, and by now you know I am a Christian woman. I am a believer of Jesus. I want to use the scripture, if you don't mind, out of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. And if you're a non-Christian, before you turn me off, just listen for a minute because I'm going to give you nuggets that goes far beyond the scripture reference that I'm going to give to you. So if you could just hold on just for a few moments, you're going to see how you too can also implement the information I'm going to share. Okay. And the, the scripture out of Habakkuk chapter two, verse two says, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Again, it says, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that the herald may run with it. Now, you know, I read somewhere before that if you don't know where you're going, you will never get there. So it's so important that we write down our vision. And I don't know if you're like me, but I'm now at the age of 55, I'll soon be 56 in July, that I can have a vision, I can have a revelation, I could write, I could think of something, but I don't take the time to write it down and I will lose it. So I am learning more and more that I need to start writing down those things that I am seeing in a vision or those things as I'm reading different articles and certain things are coming to mind that I take the time to write it down, whether it is I'm writing it in my journal or I'm typing it on the computer, whatever that is, I'm making sure that I'm capturing that so I can write it down. So this is where I wanna go with this today. I wanna talk about journal writing. And I want to talk about what's important. This is one of the most important activities that I believe we can utilize on our journey is that we will begin to write down the vision, write down the thoughts that we have. So let's take it that you want to write a a story or an article. Let's say you want to write down whatever. You want to write down a screenplay. Whatever it is, start writing it down. Start journaling that. Journal what you are envisioning. That is so important. Capture what it is that is being deposited into your being. So we're going to journal. But listen, don't just write it down. From time to time, go back to your journal and read those things that you have written down. I have several journals. And every now and then, I will go through and pick up a journal and read through not each page that's written there, but I sit there and I'll go through them. Before the pandemic, I was traveling a lot. So I have a journal that was just that I utilized when I would travel to Germany. I have a journal that I would utilize when I traveled to Israel. I have a journal that I utilized when I traveled to women's conferences, just different thoughts that I would capture. I have a journal when I was hanging out with family and friends, whatever that is, I would have a journal, I would capture thoughts, and then I would go back through those journals to see those things that I had taken note of. Writing goals on paper allows you to be conscious of your progress. So writing goals on paper allows you to be conscious of your progress. And then the other thing is post your written goals so that you can see them regularly. So even in my office, I keep a tablet And there are times I'll take the post-it notes and I will actually stick them to my wall. Something that I want to take care of that day or that week so I am regularly looking at it. It's always before me. I've written it down. It's something I want to accomplish. Don't be afraid to write those things down and then to follow through as you have written them down. In your office, near a mirror, in the bathroom, I know that there is paper and I've seen these and I'll name the stores, and no, I'm not getting paid to name the stores. I've seen these in TJ Maxx. I've seen these in Marshalls. I've seen these at other locations where there's some sort of, I don't know if it's wallpaper or whatnot, but it is where you can write on it while you're in the shower. Because so many people say they get thoughts when they're in the shower. And so there's this laminate, if you will. There's, there's, I can't remember the name of the actual material, but people will write, put that up on their shower and they have a marker that you can use in the water and they'll write down goals or thoughts. People then take a picture of that with their cell phone once they get out the shower and then they go and write those things down in their journal. I'm sure you can find that probably on Amazon or wherever. 
but it's where you can write while you're in the shower. So there are thoughts there because so many people have thoughts in the shower. And then once a goal is written, you can reflect on it on a regular basis. It really becomes easier to witness the manifestation of what it is that you have written. When you have it, you see it, you see it come alive, and then you can check those things off. When you write down your goals, you will see how God is answering or redirecting you or directing you for the first time. So you can see this. You can see this. Writing in your journals, after a while, it becomes very meaningful for you because you're getting your thoughts out. You will also find that maybe you're not stressing as much because you're not trying to remember something. You know, there was a time that people share, put your pen and paper next to your bed. And when a thought comes to mind, go ahead and write it down. Then you'll be able to go back to sleep because you know you've done something with it. When you are constantly journaling throughout the day, or if you set aside time to journal, you're releasing all of those thoughts. You People write books from their journals, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, they do. They write books from their journals. So that's another way. You know, when I talk about book writing, a friend of mine told me this years ago, who's an author, we were in a writing class and she said, write down a thousand words a day. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about sentence structure. Don't worry about spelling. Just type out, write down a thousand words every morning. By the end of the week, you go through, you're at 5,000 words. You go through, you structure your information. You put your book together. If you do that, For five, for four weeks, that's 20,000 words. Five weeks, that's 25,000 words. And believe it or not, you'll end up writing more than a thousand words a day. You can end up with a complete book right there. You can end up with a complete book right there. So when you're thinking about even writing a book or writing a blog post or writing some sort of workbooks or putting together podcast content, when you're taking the time to write it out that way, you'll realize how much content you have. And today with people doing remote work, homeschooling, things are different. People are looking for books on how to. This can become your how-to book. This can become your how-to book, especially if you're being transparent in your writing. Writing in your journal becomes really meaningful to you. Writing your goals will help you stay focused each day. And last week I I was telling you about my book, the 49 days, seven weeks, getting to the root of it. There's a section in the book where I talk about what I'm sharing with you right now. Some of you have written in or called in and said, hey, I was able to hear that podcast. I picked up that book. I grabbed your PDF that you offered. Thank you so much. And how life is already beginning to change for them, even after one week. Yeah, it starts somewhere. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to start by envisioning your goals. You know, on this podcast, I talk a lot about our goals and our dreams. And I'm hearing from so many of you saying that now that you're hearing me saying that regularly, you're keeping up on it and you're seeing a transformation. You're seeing a transition and things are happening for you. And I want to say congratulations to all of you and understand we are in this together. We are absolutely in this together. So that's what this podcast is all about. We always talk about something. And while we're talking about it, we are sipping on our mimosa. So go ahead, stop what you're doing right now and take a sip of that mimosa and just see how refreshing that is and get excited about saying, okay, these are my goals, especially now that we're ending the month of March and we're going into the month of April and we're going from one quarter into the second quarter of the year. This is our opportunity to write down goals every three months. We should be writing down our goals and writing down our dreams. And even as we are writing those down, something that I do when I'm doing different master class, now that they're all on Zoom, I do what I call life look. Life look is where you take a quick look back over the last three months and you say, okay, what did I do? What did I complete? What was successful? Where do I need to strengthen? Where were my weaknesses? And how can I do the next quarter differently? So what I want you to do is take a look back as we're writing down our goals, we're writing the vision, and then we're going to execute it. I want you to just pause for a moment and think back, okay, from January the 1st to where we are today, what has been working for me? What did I accomplish? What are some things that I wanted to accomplish and maybe I did not get to accomplish those things? 
Those things will be the first, will become the priority of your next quarter. Those things that you're like, I needed to complete this, but I was not successful in doing it. Don't beat yourself up. You're just going to move that to the priority list of this next quarter, which is April, May, and June. So that will be the first thing you tackle in the month of April so that you're bringing that to a completion. So you want to do a life look. You want to look back and see, okay, what did I accomplish? And you want to write those things down in your journal that these are some things that I accomplished in the first quarter of 2021. And then write down beside that how you feel about accomplishing those things. What does that do for you? How does that excite you? How does that motivate you? And then take a few moments to write down what it feels like not accomplishing some of the things you had hoped to accomplish. But don't stay there long because remember, that's going to become your priority when you're looking at April 2021. Okay, so that's what a life look is. If you want the entire kit on what a life look will do, I do one-on-one coaching with that. Feel free to reach out to me, schedule an appointment to do so. You can do that from my website which is www.gaildudley.com. Again, that's www.gaildudley.com. Um, and that's G-A-I-L, D as in David, U, D as in David, L-E-Y. So G-A-I-L, D as in David, U, D as in David, L-E-Y.com. You can look there, look at the services or click book now and then book that section with me. We will go over that. We will go over that. And trust me, people have a blast going through that. It puts some structure to what it is that they're doing, and it does make life easier. And I did it years ago, and I still do it today. And I continue to do it because the method works, and it's something that I designed. So you have life look. Next thing, as you're writing your goals to help you stay focused, you want to envision your goals. You want to complete what I call a faith portrait, not a vision board. This is a faith portrait. This is something you can do on your own, but we can also do this on a one-on-one session. But on your own, you want to go get a poster board. And you really don't need a poster board. You can really do this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. You go through a magazine. Yes, you still go through a magazine today. You don't have to use it with the glue in the magazine. And you're going to say, this sounds like a vision board. It's not. It's something totally different. You're going to go through. So let's say that this quarter coming up or still this year, you want to make X amount of money. You're going to write that down on your faith portrait, the money you want to make. You want to absolutely write that down. When you're writing that down, you also want to determine what is your worth? What are you valued at? What is your, if you know, and not that we're going to do an hourly package of anything, but what is your hourly pay? What is your hourly worth? Not what you're currently making at your job, but what is your hourly worth? Are you worth $150? Yep, I'm sure you probably are. Some of you are probably worth $500 an hour. Others of you who are tuning in are probably worth $1,000 or $1,500. Some of you may be worth $10,000 an hour. And do not be shy about listing what you're worth. Identify what you're worth. And the reason why you're identifying this on your faith portrait, because I want you to be mindful of the time that you waste. Because what you're doing is that you're wasting that hourly fee. You're wasting that. And that's why I have you do this. So on your faith portrait, this is what I'm worth. And then on that faith portrait, you're writing down, this is what I currently make per hour. If you want to look at it as an hourly, this is what I choose to aspire to. And this is where I want to go. So looking at this in in this upcoming quarter, the second quarter of the year, what steps do I need to make? This is what you're going to write on your faith portrait. What steps do I need to take to make sure I am meeting my hourly worth? And what does that look like? This is all going on your faith portrait. When your faith portrait, let's say you've been wanting to go from renting a home to owning a home. Well, on your faith portrait, you want to write down the amount of debt that you currently have. And from that amount of debt that you currently have, what is your plan of action? What is your plan of action to begin to get that debt down? What does that look like? So what are you going to do in the second quarter to start tackling that? Then you're going to carry that over to the third quarter and carry that over to the fourth quarter. Will you be able to get that done by the end of the fourth quarter? Or are you looking at going into 2022? And here, it's okay if you go into 2023. I don't know your amount of debt. So this becomes a part of your faith portrait. By faith, I'm going to make sure that I become debt-free. 
On your faith portraits, you may say, you know what? I've gained weight over the pandemic and I want to lose so much weight. On your faith portrait, you put down your current weight and then you put down where you want to see yourself at the end of the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. If you want to start eating healthy, you want to put that on your faith portrait. I want to begin to eat healthy. And here are some things I need to implement. I need to start backing out sugar. So maybe you'll start with no added sugar. And then maybe you get to a point where then you won't have any sugar at all. Maybe you want to get away from fast food or processed food. All of this information you are putting on the faith portrait. So the reason I say you can use a magazine, you may want to glue some images. Or you just may want to write or you may want to doodle on this faith portrait, whatever you want it to look like. Again, the entire faith portrait, how you can do that is in the book, Getting to the Root of It. But if you want to do it more specialized and you want to do a one-on-one consultation with me, again, you can go to my website, which is www.gaildudley.com and book a one-hour session. You don't need to have more than one hour, not unless we get into some things and you decide, hey, I kind of like want to meet with you on a monthly basis. You can do that too. But this is just to get you started. So you complete your faith portrait from your goals and what you have visualized, things that you want to tackle, things that you want to get to. And then this helps you, again, stay on track with your goals. And when when I use the word faith portrait, I want you to pray over your faith portrait. And I want you to ask God to help you. And again, those of you who are tuning in and says, well, you know, I'm not a follower of Jesus. You know, that's okay. That's okay. What can you pull from this to help you in your daily walk? to get your schedule, your faith, your portrait, some things you want to take care of, your life look, some goals, some objectives, and taking time to journal. I want you to utilize this as well. Now, y'all, journals are powerful means of reflecting, of processing, and living through each day. That's what a journal will do for you, okay? This journal gives you space to write your innermost thoughts, your healings, your wounds, your reflections, your pain, past, present, and future. Journaling also allows you to move forward with passion and intention, just for you to think about that. Writing and reflecting in your journal gives you an opportunity to experience, you know, what we were just talking about, good health, being willing to deal with past situations and healing, looking at that amount of debt, looking at that number and working through that. It's stretching you, it's saying, you know, I want to own a home, I want to buy a new car, I want to go back to school. I want to help my neighbor. I want to become a philanthropist. Whatever that is, it can help you there. Y'all, but understand this is a process. At times, this can be very painful when you're looking at things in your journal and you're saying, wow, I didn't accomplish much this quarter. But, you know, look at it, deal with it, and then say, okay, I'm going to just move this to my priority list for the next quarter. I want you to keep pushing through. Journaling will just give you a place of this reflection of your life situations and things that may come to the surface. And it gives you the ability to deal with them on a healthier state of mind. It comes back to our mindset, people. It comes back to our mindset. So this is what I want you to do if you're serious about continuing this. If you don't have the book, grab the book. Again, it's called Getting to the Root of It. You can get it on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble. Or again, if you want to join the journey with me, I will send you the PDF. Then I will send you the invoice, just like I told you last time, for $49. And for 49 days, we'll take this journey together just to look at things. Say, you know what? I'm writing down the vision. And not only will I write down the vision, I'm going to execute this vision. That's what I'm going to do in this season of my life. But we got to start somewhere. All right, y'all, that's a lot to take in. Go ahead and take a sip of that mimosa. Think about where do you want to do? Before we sign off today, write down one of your goals. Write it down. What is it that you want to tackle this weekend, next week? Write it down. Get in the habit of doing that. All right. I don't know about you, but after I just gave you the recipe for give the people what they want mimosa, I think I'm going to have to go make one of those. Doesn't that sound absolutely delicious? So go ahead and get that mimosa. You can do that spiked or not. Spiked or not. Let me hear from you. Again, I have coaching slots available. Just go to my website, www.gaildudley.com. And then also, I have an amazing thing coming up on April the 2nd. April the 2nd is called Bold Moves. Let's make some bold moves. It will happen at 12 noon to 1. 
April the 2nd, that is Good Friday, and I have intentionally placed it on Good Friday for a reason. And for those of you, let me warn you ahead of time, we will be doing some prayer, some time of prayer, and we will also be, that particular piece is all biblically based. But I'm talking about at the age of 55, how I made some bold moves, and I'm going to give you some step-by-step things that you can implement to help you make some bold moves as well. There is a fee that's associated with that. Um, It's $55. Let me know if you're interested. You can email me directly at info, I-N-F-O, the period sign, Gail Dudley, and that is G-A-I-L, D as in David, U-D as in David, L-E-Y at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram, y'all. Instagram, that's at Gail Dudley. Y'all know it, G-A-I-L-D-U-D-L-E-Y. Follow me on Twitter. It's at Gail Dudley. Y'all got it, G-A-I-L. D-U-D-L-E-Y. I'm on LinkedIn as well as Gail Dudley. And Facebook, you can find me at News in Motion. News in Motion. That's Monday through Friday, 7.25 a.m. Eastern Time. It's also uploaded on YouTube. You can find me on YouTube, which is youtube.com backslash Gail Dudley. That's right. G-A-I-L. Dias and David L E Y. Hopefully, you'll find me on one of those platforms, and I'm always right here with something at Mimosa's podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And y'all know what I say y'all stay well and remember, make some moves. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Something in Mimosa's podcast. And don't forget to come back next week. For more Something in Mimosas, follow Gail on Instagram at Gail Dudley, subscribe to Gail's YouTube, or visit us at gaildudley.com.